Hey all you splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I do appreciate your time. Um, well, uh, uh, an old season has ended and a new season has started. I didn't get a chance to do this yesterday, um, so I figured we would go into the Glint store and buy some cards. If you're new here, if you were just surfing around YouTube looking for card games, if you kind of like collectible card games, um, Splinterlands, uh, which is one of the games I cover on this channel, uh, is a collectible card game. It happens to be on a blockchain. Uh, don't let that scare you away, though. Because uh, in this game, if you like uh, to collect cards and play, you own your own cards and you can uh, buy, sell, trade them on the blockchain. So don't let that part scare you. But anyway, in the game, just kind of step back a little bit. First of all, if by the end of this uh, you want to get some more information, go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel. And there's a number of other uh, YouTube creators who also cover the game. Gathering the Magic, KGM Jam, After Sound, Dwayne Cunningham, just to name a few. Uh, if you want to get some more information on the game. But uh, also, if you're thinking about playing, uh, please use my referral link in the show notes. Uh, it'll help us both out. So um, two of the things that you can earn in the game while you're just playing a standard game. There's a lot of things uh, within the game, a lot of facets, as it were. But just playing the standard ranked ladder matches, um, you can earn two things. First of all is Splinter Shards, which is one of the tokens that's used in the game. It's one, the main token. Uh, the second thing is called Glint. And the Glint is a token, but it's not like a Web3. It's not a cryptocurrency. It's all in-game, just like other games you play, where you earn certain tokens, like gold or silver or whatever they call them, and then you spend them to go ahead and buff up or uh, make your character better, make your deck better. In this case, uh, it is to make your deck better. So um, in this game, as you go along and as you win games, you win uh, or win matches, you win SPS and you also win Glint, okay? But at the end of the season, depend upon how well you placed during that season, you also get another uh, bulk um, kind of uh, award, as it were, okay? So that's what we're talking about right now. We just started a, a new season, and um, I'm going to go in and use some of the glint that I earned during the last season to uh, buy some cards and improve my deck. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so first off, uh, my main account, I ended in Champ 3, which is where I have been. I have not been able to make it out of Champ 3. Um, and as you all may know, if you follow me along, uh, I use a program uh, bot, as it were, called Archmage that plays my account in Wild. In this game, you can allow that. Um, now, in modern format, you cannot. You have to play it live. Um, but uh, it finished in Champ 3 at 37.40, and I got an end-of-season uh, award of 163419 So with that, we'll go back to the here and go to the shop. Uh, you can Well, let me go back. Uh, you can see that I have a total of 329000 a little bit more that I have available for spending. Um, and as you know, if you've been following me, I've been concentrating on the epic draws um, because let's jump over to the items and sort by epic. Um, I fully feel that between... Uh, I love Thandalorian Blade. I've been using Thandalorian Blade a lot. When I can, I use Olivia the Brook. When I can, I use Arachne Weaver. And Halfling Refugee is just a powerhouse for one mana. The other cards are also nice too. I have not got a whole lot of experience with Kazi Conjurer and Shock Trooper. But my whole point is that I, I really think that although the legendaries are nice and cool uh, for what they are, I think that the epics for day-to-day -day play in hands, um, they bring a lot of strength and a lot of value. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Um, first of all, we will go in and as always, I will buy three levels of the merits. Okay. And after I buy these, we'll discuss those. So um, if you're new to the game, you can buy uh, one batch, uh, which for merits is 10. And each of the, <clears throat> excuse me. So each of the units of 200 merits costs, uh, did cost 200, uh, 200 glint per. So each, that first batch was 2000, okay? But, Whenever you buy a full batch, then the price goes up. 
Um, and this is to kind of limit people from powering through um, their collections too fast, I guess. Um, so, but I fully believe that buying three batches, if you can, of merits on a weekly basis uh, is a good thing, uh, if not more, because the cards that these purchase that you can buy with the merits uh, are very strong. And previous to this system going into place, you had the only place you can buy them, or the only place you could get the merits was through Guild Brawls, which was a very slow and laborious process. Um, so the third batch cost 4500 uh, so it went 2,000, 3,000, and 4,500 uh, per batch. But we'll take a look at that in a minute um, as I show you the cards. Let's go back to the shop now. Next up, I want to buy a full batch of Epic Draws. They're 7,500 Glen apiece. 25 is a full batch. So we'll go ahead and buy those and use potions, which increases the odds of them being gold foil. Cross my fingers here. Give me a few Olivia's. Okay, let's just reveal all. Yes, starting off with a couple of Olivia's. Nice, three Olivia's. Four, oh, gold foil. Okay, so I'll take that. Uh, gold foil shock trooper. I wish it was a, uh, one of the other ones, but um, I'm sure that'll come in handy at some point. So I got three, four, four Olivia's. Uh, one, two, three, four Arachne Weavers. A bunch of shock troopers. Okay. So that's that. Um, let's also go in and let's buy three legendaries. And these are pretty pricey. Now you will also notice that uh, recently they added the gold foil rarity draws. To me, gold foils are great when you can get them, but I don't concentrate my deck collection on them. If you're relatively new to the game, gold foils, if you play gold foils, they're a lot rarer than regular foils, even legendaries. Um, but they increase your earning when you play with them. Of course, exponentially, they're a lot more expensive to buy. Um, but they did add to the game where you can go ahead and buy gold foil rarity draws, um, and they're progressively more expensive. See, you can see here that a regular foil common draw only costs 150 glint, whereas the gold foil costs 3,500. But most gold foils don't start out at, uh, as far as I know, all gold foils don't start at level one. They start out level two, three. Um, so there's more value in it. We're not going to talk about that now. But my main point is, as a collection, uh, I'm not concentrating on gold foil right now. I'm concentrating on maxing out my regular foils first. So let's go ahead and buy three legendaries. See, I have 132,000, and this will cost 105,000. So let's do it and use alchemy potions okay see what we got here and uh we've got a griffsy we've got an endless gibbon and we've got a blackmore jinx now i think this is the first one of this one that i have uh, i love the griffsy um and once again i had to look really close because when you're turning over legendaries it's hard to uh, see if they are actually gold foil or not. See this thin silver border? That indicates a regular foil. If that was actually gold, which is hard to see when you got a gold border around it, then, um, okay, so either way, it's hard to see. It's harder than past expansions, but uh, okay. Let's go ahead and jump over to the uh, guild shop, and we have 7,000, uh, a little bit over 7,000. So I can get three more Gladius cases, which are the card packs I was talking about that you purchase with Merits. And I think I have a, a few others to open as well. Okay, so, and I have a few extra. We can buy some, let's go back. Buy some Bloodstones, which in, uh, increases the odds of getting Legendary card. Um, so, oops. Not quite enough. Okay, so I've got I've got enough to buy 31 stones. So I don't go out of my way to buy extra Bloodstones, but um, whatever extra merits I have left over, uh, after buying Gladius cases, I just spent on Bloodstones. Um, okay, so let's go to the open, and I have 13, actually. 
I have 13 Gladius cases to open, so let's go ahead and open them and cross my fingers, because these are the most difficult set to collect in-game. Um, like I said, up until they put the merits in the store, they were extremely hard to collect. Now they're a lot easier, but they still bring a lot of power. Ooh, here it goes. Nice, legendary. I was hoping for a gold foil, but... Okay, so no gold foils, but I did get two legendaries out of 13 packs, so I think it was 13. Uh, so that was uh, above average, I would say. I got three Captain Katie's, a very strong card. Uh, three Catrilla Gobsons, also a very strong card. Do -do. Uh, Fina Vixum, I use her once in a while. Don't use Larissa too often. Um, Lisa Fox, I use once in a while. I love Ajax Lightfoot. Uh, I've been working Isgald Vorst in a few more times. Even though it's a common, it works pretty well. And I don't play Catrifus too much. So let's go ahead and uh, really quickly jump over to my set. Let's clear. Let's sort by uh, Rebellion Reward. And let's look at Epics, since that's the one, um, the one that I'm concentrated on. We'll see we have some extras here. I got four of those, seven extra of those, five of those. So let's go ahead and combine. And once again, I'll stop and make a, uh, a statement here. When you're doing combine alls, which saves a lot of time when you're combining cards, make sure you have everything filtered correctly on your screen. Everything on your screen when you hit combine all is going to combine. So if you've got a bunch of extra cards that you didn't really want to combine, uh, be aware of that. So I do have this sorted right. So here is the combine all cards button and we will do that. And let's see if I have enough to level uh, Olivia. Okay, Olivia leveled to four, which I think she only picked up one extra life, but still that's better than nothing. So yes, she picked up one extra life. Now let's go back. So we've got Olivia at four, Shock Trooper at four, um, and the rest are at level three. Okay, so let us take a look at legendaries. I did buy a few legendaries. Uh, let's go ahead and combine all here. This is not gonna level. These one mana cards, um, a lot of times they're not very handy on the high mana matches, but um, you know, in most other low to medium matches, they come in really handy. Um, there's a full assortment. There's one legendary for each splinter, and they all have the same stats, but each one has a different power. So let's go back to items. Uh, let's see here. Endless Gibbon. Uh, once again, not going to be able to level it, but got an extra card there. Okay, so on my legendaries, I haven't been sinking a lot of glint into legendaries since the set came out. Um, so they're sitting at uh, half and half, level one and level two. Um, we did not buy any commons or rares um, this time around. Let me see how many. I still have 27,000 glint. Let's look at some rares. How many? Uh, I cannot get 50. Maybe I can get 25. Okay, I can get 25 rares. Let's do 25 rares. Go ahead and use potions just to kind of use up. The, the rare selection of cards are all also very good, solid cards for the most part that can fill out your deck pretty well. Okay, let's reveal all. Nice, gold foil. Starting off with a gold foil. What else have we got? Okay, I've been using Janie Rebel, and high mana matches uh, works pretty well to me. I've also uh, been using working Commander Slade in pretty well. Um, believe it or not, I've also been using Quilliam Legionary, especially using that in that front end uh, slot. Mostly, I've been using those in the ranged only matches. Seems to come in handy. I don't win them all, but uh, seems to come in handy. So I got a gold foil Dragon Ed Egg Forager, and you can see how the border, what I was talking about, it's a little bit uh, more difficult to pick out. And it's even harder if it's got a legendary ring around it. Either way, you get my point. Okay, so to round things off, so this doesn't get too long, let's go back and let us look, let's clear here, and look at the Gladius cards. 
Okay, so these were the other cards that I bought uh, from Gladius Cases, and you can see I got a number here. Um, I got one of those. Uh, let's go ahead and just do a combine all. Remember, once again, uh, before you hit combine all, make sure you uh, have exactly what you want to combine on the screen. Because like I said, one of the facets of this game is buy, sell, and trading. Uh, and if you had a bunch of cards that you had bought um, for trading down the line and you didn't want to combine them, you wanted to keep them single, then this could throw a wrench into your plans. Okay, so my Catrelba, which I use a lot, is almost level six. I'm one, one BCX away from level six. And when she goes up to level six, she picks up a life. Not a whole lot, but still awesome card, awesome card. Uh, let's check out uh, just by rarity. And I've been collecting these for two years now, maybe more. Um, and you can see the speed at which they're going up. Um, my commons are just now at level six. Uh, some of them are level five, right? My rares are at level four. There's some about half and half, level four and level five. Um, Captain Crady's, uh, Captain Crady, Captain Katie's great. Uh, Ajax Lightfoot's great. I used Relinor Cleaver in that second spot a lot. Um, great cards. Um, Epic, as the rarity goes up and gets rarer, um, I think the, the cards themselves get stronger, but their specific use cases get um, uh, more narrow, okay, where you would throw them in. Like uh, commons, there's a lot of places you could throw those in uh, different match types. Rares, same. But as you get up into epics and legendaries, they get more specific on what type of matches you're going to throw those in. Everybody, everybody loves Quora. Love her too, Marisol. Um, don't use Trap too often. Don't use Gorth too often. Use Edith in range, high mana matches once in a while. Um, and of course, legendaries. <sighs> I've been using Sol Sola a lot more lately, and I wish I had her at more than level one. Let's look at Goldfoil. Do I have her? I have her in a Goldfoil. That's, it kind of spurred my brain because I'm like, I've been playing her at level two. I have her in Goldfoil. Um, but I've been playing her a lot more since uh, da -da -da, Rebellion, Rewards, and Epic uh, with Olivia the Brook. OK, uh, I don't know necessarily know if that's an awesome matchup, but it seems to work pretty well together. And I'm not saying they work well together, but whenever you have a hand, um, having the other card healing and Olivia doing what crazy stuff she does, it seems to work pretty well when you throw a good tank up front. So either way, this has been Bronze Dragon sharing uh, my end of season purchases with you. Everything's going along pretty well. As you can see, uh, uh, my specific goal is to max out my epics first and then my rares and commons, and then I'll, I'll, I'll work on my legendaries. Um, with that said, I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. And hey, I'll see you in Splinterlands.